Never fret, never fear, your saviour is here. It's the never imitated, and therefore never duplicated, still not medicated, <laughs> living legend that is Ace Trainer Liam. Don't you love it when I'm in a good mood and I'm feeling really smug and arrogant? That means it's going to be a good episode of WTF Moments. <laughs> So today's episode begins with Mimi leading Go, Chloe and Cerise, as well as a bunch of Go's Pokemon, through some exercise. Given that Cerise refers to it as martial arts, I'm going to assume it's Tai Chi, but it could very easily be Kung Fu. I honestly have no idea, like I know nothing about martial arts. Of course, that's obvious. Look at the state of me. You think these muscles have ever exercised willingly? But on a similar note, how does Mimi know this stuff? Last time I checked, Mimi wasn't a Medicham or an Urshifu, so how does he just randomly know this random martial art? Did he take classes? And what kind of place even holds martial arts classes specifically for Mr. Mimes? Mimey points out that Metapod is performing the best. Ah ha you get it? It's funny because Metapod has no limbs and doesn't move. Well done, Pokemon. You've hit the lowest common denominator of comedy right there. I bet you're real proud of that one, aren't you? Scorbunny then goes full Kyle Broflovsky and kicks the baby. Kick the baby! The baby in this case being Metapod. Now some might say it was just an accident, whereas others, like myself, would just say score bunnies. I couldn't believe what I was seeing when Go suddenly started panicking, remembering that inside every Metapod is a Butterfree waiting to emerge, and that this obviously means that canonically Go thinks that his potential second Butterfree has been turned to mush. Well, more mush than a bug in a chrysalis normally would be. Pokemon though, that's pretty dark, even for you. Oh, not to worry though, they threw in Cerise worrying if this nearby rock was okay as some distracting comic relief. Well done, Pokemon. Crisis averted. So anyway, Ash and Go head off to Hoenn to take part in the Battle Frontier Flute Cup. Now, this all sounds great, but you know what I'm gonna say, don't you? Look at how many Pokemon each trainer gets to use. That's right. Two. Mate, why do they do this? Nobody in the history of humankind has ever wanted to see a Pokemon battle where both trainers only use two Pokemon each. Give us some proper battles, damn it! Luckily, they do kind of learn just how good long full battles can be towards the end of Ultimate Journeys. But for now, come on, guys. So Pokemon have this girl doing the promo for the Flute Cup, and they have her say this line. I want you to enter. Mate, they knew exactly what they were doing with that that line. Pokemon writers are filthy. Pass it on. Go is surprised to find out that Ash will be using Pikachu and Mimi in the Flute Cup. What, did you think he was going to use one of the zero other Pokemon he has with him? Oh look, a Detective Pikachu reference. It's not a WTF moment and I've got nothing funny to say about it, but I know one of you would whinge if I didn't mention it, so... It's here. Mimi then tries to Jedi mind trick Go into dealing with this later. Shame he's not actually a Jedi, because it didn't work. Go says he'll be using Score Bunny, and then we get a really uninteresting flashback telling us how he chose Scyther. And I'm not even being harsh here, it really wasn't worth showing. He literally looks at Pinsir, and Pinsir turns away, and then he looks at Scyther and chooses Scyther. Christ, Pokemon, don't hurt yourselves with all this narrative heavy lifting you're doing. Ash then replies to Go's story with, Then it's Scyther. As if he's the one making the decision. Ash, mate, the decision's already been made, you numpty. Go says says he doesn't know much about battling, to which Ash replies, There you go, talking like that again. Like what? This kid caught his first Pokemon like two episodes ago. He's spitting facts, mate. He doesn't know a lot about this battling lark. Ash then comes face to face with Metal Bat. Oh no, wait, wrong anime. He comes face to face with this generic 1950s delinquent looking goober. Seriously, mate, the cast of Grease called, they want their mid-style back. Oh, that's going to upset some people. I don't care. <laughs> As it turns out, this is actually quite a nice lad and he just wants Ash to move out the way so he can put his bottle in the recycling. You know what, Pokemon? Fair play. You wanted us to think he'd be a complete tool and then be surprised by the juxtaposition that he's actually a really nice, friendly guy. And I fell for it, so well done. So does anyone know why this woman is just chilling with her baby in the middle of the woods? Can't be the safest place for a baby, surely. Like, sure, I should mind my own business, but let's not forget this is the Pokemon world where they literally have three-foot wasps everywhere. I'm just saying, it seems pretty irresponsible to me. Now, I know what you're thinking, and no, you're not going mad. This is exactly what you think it is. 
Woods. It's Go nose deep in a Mighty Enna's arsehole. Yeah, they could have just had him bump into Mighty Enna, but no. You just had to have the poor lad get stuck right in for a good old whiff, didn't you? Honestly, Pokemon, who's this for? Actually, you know what? Don't answer that because we know who this kind of stuff is for and the less said about them, the better. Score Bunny gives Mighty Enna a scratch on the backside for good measure. Although, frankly, it looked more like a slap. Pokemon, can you please stop this? So to nobody's amazement, the Mighty Enna actually belongs to this guy, who we now know is called Hodge. Oh my god, it was his all along. What an incredibly surprising revelation. Go gushes about wanting to catch more Pokemon, and Hodge says it actually sounds pretty cute, which Go takes the wrong way, causing an argument. Score Bunny then decides it would be a good idea to kick Hodge, but wimps out the moment Mighty Enna growls at it. So then he just kicks Ash up the arse for no reason. Score Bunny is an arsehole. Pass it on. Well, actually, Liam, I think you'll find if you were paying attention, Score Bunny was going to kick Hodge, but was scared by Mighty Emma and couldn't stop the kick it was already doing. So that's why it kicked Ash. What do you mean it couldn't stop the kick it was already doing? Stopping yourself from kicking's really easy. You just stop moving your leg. Pikachu then gets angry at Score Bunny and shocks Ash. This one doesn't even make sense. Like, we all know Pikachu can choose the target for his Thunderbolts, so why would he shock Ash? Is it just because Ash was between him and Scorbunny? Man, with friends like this, you're friends with a knobhead. I'm just saying, they could have easily drawn Ash sideways on for this scene, but they didn't. They chose to have him point his rear end at the camera. What is it with Pokemon and bums today? Seriously, someone at Pokemon HQ needs a long, hard look in the mirror, I think. But never mind that, look at Mighty Enna being the goodest boy. Now, I think the Pokemon expected us to be shocked that Hodge turned out to be Go's first opponent in the tournament, but let's be real, we all saw it coming. The character of the day who Go immediately butted heads with after Go and Scorbunny via violated the guy's mighty Enna. It was bound to happen, wasn't it? That's not how you surprise people. This is how you surprise people. Before we continue the video, let me say a massive thank you to this video's sponsor, Final Fantasy XIV Online, available on both PC and PlayStation 4 and 5. For those who don't know, Final Fantasy XIV Online is a huge online RPG set in an incredible open world where you can set out on grand adventures either on your own or with friends. And what's even better is right now you can play two of their award-winning adventures absolutely free. Yeah, that's right. You can play your way up to level 60 for free with no restrictions on game time. So there's no better time than now to jump in. Simply click our link in the description to go and check out the free trial and you can get started with the important things like customizing your character. You can choose their race, their clan, their gender, and then you can freely customize their appearance to get them looking absolutely perfect. Here's the character that I made, He's Ansem. I mean, yeah, he is, but also that is his name, He's Ansem. There's also a job system in the game and the free trial gives you 14 different job classes to choose from, including some of my personal favorites like Black Mage, Monk, and Dragoon. Once your character's been created, you are free to head out and experience one of the greatest Final Fantasy stories ever told absolutely free. Again, head to our link in the description to check out the free trial and get yourself started with Final Fantasy XIV Online. And of course, thank you in advance to everybody that goes and checks out the free trial using our link because every person that clicks the link helps support this channel. And now, back to the video. As their battle begins, Go thinks he has the upper hand with Scyther being a bug type against the dark type Mighty Enna. And oh boy, was he wrong. Mighty Enna busts out a fire fang and takes out Scyther in a single hit. Mate, I know Go's new to this, but Still, that's embarrassing. Like, knowing that Mighty Enna gets basically all of the fang moves is like Mighty Enna 101. It's practically Mighty Enna's entire shtick. Granted, I guess we should cut Go some slack. After all, Mighty Enna's not been in a non-remake main series Pokemon game since Sun and Moon back in 2016. That was seven years ago. Well, actually, Liam, I think you'll find that Mighty Enna was able to be in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and they weren't remakes. Yeah, but you had to transfer it in from Pokemon Bank, so that doesn't count. And also, have you played Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon? They were basically remakes. As Go returns Scyther to its Pokeball, he apologizes, saying, Sorry, 
That was a strategic mistake. Ah, yes, a strategic mistake. It's all right, go. We've all been there. Hell, at the European Championships back in April, I made a strategic mistake against a Terra Normal Choice Banded Extreme Speed Dragonite and a Chien Pal. I turned up. As Scorbunny enters the battle, hoping to double kick my Tiena, Hodge has my Tiena cut it off with a Snarl and then follow up with Crunch. Wait, Fire Fang, Snarl, and Crunch? Mate, that's not even a bad set for my Tiena. Like, it's even got coverage for bug types, as we've seen. Is Hodge a competent trainer? Those are so rare in this show. Man, it's like finding a unicorn. Hodge is a unicorn? Pass it on? After the battle and after healing his Pokemon, Go runs off to try and catch a Wurmple, even ignoring Ash's request to watch his battles in the tournament. Mate, I get that you're bummed out about losing your first proper battle, but there's really no reason to be a bad mate to Ash all of a sudden. We then get a quick slideshow of the tournament showing Ash and Hodge winning their way towards the final. And Hodge is shown to be ridiculously good. His mighty Enna is shown battering an Altaria with Fire Fang, which don't forget is a resisted move. Then they follow it up with him beating a Metagross with his Hariyama. And in what universe does that ever happen? Mate, with how good they've made Hodge look, I really hope they don't make him do something stupid that undoes everything good I've said about him. Oh no. They're gonna make him do something stupid that undoes all the good things I've said about him, aren't they? At the start of the final, Hodge sends out Hariyama and Ash sends out Mimi, to which Go, who bear in mind only just got there in time for the start of the final, reacts with, what? Mr. Mime? Yes, Go. Of course, Mr. Mime. Ash literally told you that Mimey was going to be his other Pokemon besides Pikachu. Plus, a Psychic and Fairy type against a Fighting type. That's a pretty decent matchup for Ash. Well, you know, depending on Hariyama's moveset. But of course, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Oh, well, there you go. Hodge tells Hariyama to start with Force Palm. So I guess now we can relax and assume that this Hariyama doesn't know any Steel type moves. Also, not the best look for Hodge here. Like, I know his Mighty Enna's Fire Fang worked well against Altaria, but this move is four times resisted by Mimi. After Mimi dodges the Force Palm, Hodge tells Hariyama to use Force Palm, quote, a bunch of times. And Mimi dodges every single one. Mate, Force Palm is a 100% accuracy move and no accuracy drops have happened in the battle so far, so that shouldn't be missing at all. I guess once again, Ash is a hacker. Confirmed. Go deduces that Mimi is using martial arts to dodge the attacks. You know, as a callback to earlier in the episode. Now, that's all well and good, but if you'd like to know my genuine reaction to this revelation, bollocks! Ash then gets Mimi to use Focus Punch, and I'll be honest, out of all the moves that Mr. Mime can learn, Focus Punch was not one I expected Mimi to know. Now, here's a direct quote from Go. Who would have guessed it? Mr. Mime can really battle. I know, right? It's crazy. It's almost like it's a Pokemon. Hodge gets Hariyama to go for Arm Thrust, but Mimi uses Reflect, completely blocking the attack. Now, come on. We all know that's not how Reflect works. But considering this is a 15 base power fighting type move used on a Psychic and Fairy type with Reflect up, I'm willing to accept that Mimi wasn't phased by it at all because it would be doing barely any damage to him anyway. Although I will say, I think they just got the move wrong. I reckon that's Protect, not Reflect. After all, Arm Thrust is a move that's supposed to hit a minimum of two times, but it only struck once before Mimi blocked it, and then Hodge had to reissue the order. That, to me, sounds more like Protect, but what do you reckon? And after a Psychic Attack, Mimi has defeated Hariyama. And you know what? I didn't have Mimi wins a battle on my Pokemon bingo card, so fair play. Oh, here's a direct quote from the announcer. What a battle! What a Pokemon! My opinion of Mr. Mime in battle has done a complete 180! Crikey, have you heard what this lad's chatting? That is scathing, mate. Poor Mimi. Now, here's a direct quote from Hodge. You did a great job. Thank you, Hariyama. A great job? What do you mean? It literally didn't land a single move. Now look, for a while now, I've been one of those people that advocates that Mr. Mime is actually quite a cute Pokemon, despite the reputation it gets online. But this image makes it really hard to be one of those people. So it turns out that me, Ash, and Pikachu all had the exact same reaction to Mimey refusing to battle Mightyena. Bro, literally same. Hodge tells Mightyena to use Sucker Punch at that's it. 
There it is. There's the thing that undoes everything good I said about Hodge as a trainer. Think about it. Snarl, Crunch, and Sucker Punch. Three dark type attacking moves on one Pokemon is way too many. It's a mighty Enna for God's sake, not a King Gambit. Side note, I think this might actually be the first time we've seen Sucker Punch in the anime. Like I feel like it is. Like I can't remember a time before this where anyone in the anime has used Sucker Punch and I can remember always wondering how it would work with the way the move works. And you know what? I think they actually did really well with it here, so well done, Pokemon. Ash gets Pikachu to do its trick from the Sun and Moon anime, where it uses its own Electroweb as a catapult to give it more velocity behind its Iron Tail. That's not... I mean, technically, it is still a move. Well, two moves, actually. But it's not how they're supposed to work. Therefore, Ash is still a hacker. Confirmed. So with that, Ash wins the Battle Frontier Flute Cup and claims his prize of the five flutes. Not that they're actually worth anything anymore. After all, they've not been a thing in the games for years. Eh, I guess it's just a nice bit of nostalgia to keep all the Hoenites warm and fuzzy. Here's one for you though. Can you remember what each of the five flutes actually does in the games without looking it up? Let me know in the comments and if you cheat, you're a loser. Hodge goes to shake Ash's hand but falls off his Hariyama and knocks Ash's flutes all over the place. I mean, they're made of glass so I'm surprised they didn't smash, to be honest, but then that would have made this pointless filler episode even more pointless. Back at Cerise Lab, Go explains that he caught three Wurmple because there's no way of knowing if they're going to evolve into Cascoon or Silcoon. I mean, sure, but in that case, why not catch, like, 15? Like, statistically speaking, for all you know, all three of these Wurmple could evolve into Silcoon. Come on, Go, use your noodle. Ash gasps and says the Wurmple are evolving, only to immediately reveal that he was joking. Now, admittedly, this would be funny, were it not for the fact that main characters Pokemon evolving happens so rarely in this series, so kind of gutting, really. Yeah, I'm with Chloe. You earned this one, mate. And as the episode draws to a close, we see Mimi happily gazing at the five flutes. You know, the five flutes they almost didn't win because of Mimi. I'm just saying, Mimi could have at least tried battling against the Mighty Enna instead of just leaving it to Pikachu. You almost threw the tournament finals, you numpty. And right before the video ends, I'd like to say a massive thank you to our wonderful Ace Trainer Ultra XL members who are Bro Metapod, Purple Dragonair, Ghost Lupin, Sin City X, Gear Overlord, Toy Bonnie, Mumbai Cobra, TJ the Nerd, Night Angel, Gamer Guy Mike, Lucas Gates, Austin Coldwell, Viridian Falk, and Bogey Taker. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel. It means the world to me. So those were my WTF moments for Pokemon Journeys Episode 7, Serving Up the Flute Cup. Let me know your favourites and any that I might have missed down in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And massive thanks once again to Final Fantasy XIV Online for sponsoring this video. Please go and check out the free trial. The link is in the description. And until next time, I'm Ace Trainer Liam. Keep on training.